the Moondrop Variations. Oh boy, have I waited a long time for this. Yayo Tiger Hi-Fi Store kindly offered me a discount in exchange for a review. The box was slightly damaged from the trip, but I honestly don't care as that is not what I am here for. Removing the white cover thing gives you the real box. Pretty standard stuff. As we open it, we see a quality control card or something, a case containing the cables, and I honestly forgot what the thing is behind the warranty card. Removing those, we can see the ear tips in the back and the variations on the bottom. The build is absolutely spectacular, although I have one gripe. I wish the pattern on the faceplate of the variations was engraved rather than laser etched. But that is not why you come to this channel. <laughs> <laughs> we have finally acquired a headphone that can transparently reproduce the art, which is the music, movies, shows, or whatever. I know this is a Harman slide, but it makes perfect sense. Audio equipment should be transparent like a fine wine glass. Only then can the true colors and flavors of the music be reproduced. Ah, oh, couldn't have put it better myself. Also, for the record, I was always on the fence about the Moondrop variations. My only complaint at the time was the bass response because I was misinformed. To understand why I bought the Moondrop variations, we first have to go back to the Edimodic days. If you have been following this channel for a while, you would know that this is of course the X-curve. The bottom image shows the predictions of direct sound in cinemas after X-curve equalization, depending on the reflectivity. As we can see, the only time when direct sound is flat down to even 60 hertz is when the room is acoustically dead. Here's why this is a problem. Completely ignoring how bullshit the high frequency roll-off is. The relationship between the defect, DR, the subjective evaluation of feeling of space on the vertical axis, and the measure R, the estimated difference in sound level between the direct and reflected sounds of the listening position on the horizontal axis. Moving down the vertical scale corresponds to increased subjective satisfaction. Moving to the right corresponds to increased reflected sound in proportion to the direct sound. The minimum point of each curve describes the optimum level of diffuse sound compared to the direct sound for each program. Therefore, for maximum enjoyment of music, the the diffuse sound level needs to be 5 to 6 dB higher than the direct sound level. A good loudspeaker for this purpose would therefore be one that has two qualities, wide dispersion, thereby promoting higher levels of reflected sound, and a relatively constant directivity index so that the direct sound and reflected sound curves have similar shapes. And guess what? Reflections cannot be heard if the room is acoustically dead. So in a typically reflective room, the X curve becomes even more of an abomination than it already was. Reading through Moondrop's product page of the variations, I came across this part. Frequency response is tuned based on Moondrop VDSF target response calculated by combining B and K hats diffuse field HRTF and room reverberation curve to bring a true and accurate longitudinal sound field and present the sound quality that can accurately restore the information contained in the recording. At this point, it clicked for me. This is another image from Floyd Tool's open access AES publication I've linked in the description. I mentally simulated a typically reflective cinema with two subwoofers, and it sounded amazing. Added another sub and it sounded even better. Four subs and I was in tears. At this moment, I knew I had to buy the Moondrop variations. When discussing why the base shelf on the variations is so optimized, we have to dive deeper. People who have no clue what ear gain is often complain about the supposed low mid dip on the moon drop variations, which occurs at around 200 to 300 hertz. Let me show you why this is complete bogus. On the left, we have a flat steady state room curve of a loudspeaker. On the right, in green, we have the measurement of the flat loudspeaker measured at the eardrum. Ear gain is constantly upward sloping to the peak. Adding a bass boost that accurately tracks your ear gain will have a quote unquote low mid dip in raw measurements, but that is not how it is perceived. The frequency 105 hertz of the bass filter was chosen for several reasons. First, the majority of subwoofers are crossed over to the main speaker near or slightly below this frequency. So there are practical reasons to start from here. Secondly, variations in bass levels due to acoustical interactions between loudspeakers and rooms occur near and below near this frequency. Thirdly, informal investigations by the authors found that extending the bass shell frequency to above 105 Hz had an adverse effect on the timbre of vocals and other instruments whose fundamental pitches fall within this frequency region. On the other hand, boosting the bass below 150 to 200 Hz tends to enhance bass instruments without impacting the sound quality of the higher pitched instruments. The previous point is extremely important. Let me explain why. This image shows the masking thresholds for a 20 Hz fundamental at various loudness levels. As we can see, at all of these levels, masking is virtually non-existent. 
Perfect, of course, would be a vertical line, meaning there is absolutely zero masking. As we get to 50 Hz, we can see that it slightly increases, but this still is not significant. At 100 Hz, again, it's increasing, but it's still not of any significance. And at 200 Hz, we're of course starting to see a real effect. This is why garbage like the Moondrop Kato sounds terrible in bass. The mud masks everything. The bass shelf on the variations is so incredibly optimized. It does not get better than this. As promised in my last video, I'm going to explain one of my issues with the Harman IE target. However, once again, we have to rewind the clock. The original Harman headphone target was the eardrum response of the red line, which was the most preferred room correction. We can see it on the top. On the bottom, we have the Harman 2018 target. From my and many others' listening tests, 5 to 8 kHz is too bright, especially on the IE target. The high frequency response of the original Olive Welty headphone target is much closer to a true high fidelity speaker's frequency response received at the eardrum. I was against the 8 kHz peak for some time until I learned that this is actually required. One of the things headphones can't do on their own is stereo crossfeed, meaning you will never get a stereo image focused directly in front of you. The solution to this is diffuse field where sound is perceived as if it's coming at you from every direction. As we can see, the 8 kHz peak is required. Onto the diffuse field compensation of the variations, we can see that it is extremely good. Bass is perfectly optimized and slams like god thunder. Many of the differences between a perfect track and the diffuse field target can be attributed not only to measurement rig differences. Kernicle is using an IEC 711, and a Grass RA0402 presents different results. Meanwhile, Moondrop created this IEM using the BNK4128 and slight HRTF variances. Essentially, this is as accurate as it gets. With all of those amazing technical details, how does it sound? Usually, I don't even bother with this part because every IEM I've tried to date besides the variation sounds like complete dog shit. So this gets an exception. Let's start with Bang by Egoist. The ambience is just... It really is just shocking to me. Listening to music with the variations literally makes me feel as if I'm flying. It's like I can't figure out where sounds are coming from. It's just in space. Perfect diffuse field mid-range and treble calibration. The fact that the variations extend so well after the resonant peak just makes the ambience unbelievable. All the treble information is there, but it never sounds harsh. At around 50 seconds in Dune Dune by Everglow, I used this term earlier, but the bass and the variations literally sounds like God Thunder. My god, it's just, holy shit, how is this possible? This is the first headphone I've listened to that makes me look forward to every morning when I wake up and am able to hear this masterpiece again. Bullshit like the Odyssey LCD5 and any other multi-thousand dollar headphones I've heard are not even 1% as good as the variations. Before you say, oh Shara, you said this about the ER2SE, why don't you try to form an argument against the Moondrop variations and see where that gets you? I tried for over a year, and this is the result I got. Moondrop variations, the best IEM in the world.